Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. If you're here from the Up Next page or the home page or whatever, my name is Excoundrel. I do a lot of ed educational Wild Rift content. I'm an, uh, a Wild Rift commentator. I'm a relatively high rank uh, Wild Rift player um, and I also do like a lot of analysis of esports and that is what I'm doing here today. I'm analysing the Asia Brawl Grand Finals. We had two Filipino teams fighting up against each other. We had Omega Smart versus Next Play, both of which are incredibly skilled teams uh, and Again, what we're seeing from this uh, Asia Brawl tournament is that the Philippines are pretty damn good at Wild Rift. Um, so I'm expecting that to be a really strong country for, for Wild Rift representation in the future. But let's talk a little bit about this game. If you enjoy the content, feel free to subscribe. And also thanks to G2A for sponsoring the channel. In this particular video, um, we have got... Uh, two, this is the second game in the series, okay? So the, um, the one thing that you need to realize about this uh, particular tournament setup is that... I'm going to take my headphones off, actually, because there's no sound anyway, and I want to just check that Rupert's okay. He's playing in his playroom. Um, this particular tournament ran a system called All Round Band Pick. So in this series, it was a best of seven, so you had to get four wins to get the, to get the victory. Once you had picked a certain champion for your team... You could not pick that champion again until the very last game. If it went to a, uh, if it went to the seventh game, we had a blind pick scenario where both teams could pick whatever they wanted. Um, but for the most part, uh, once you picked a champion throughout this particular uh, tournament, you could not pick that champion again. So we saw some very weird and creative drafts. We had, we saw some rather odd drafts that didn't quite work, which I'll talk about later. But that's one of the skills of all round band pick. Do I like that tournament format? I'm not a big fan because I come from League of Legends. I much prefer the teams to just pick the strongest compositions and play at the highest skill level possible. However, as Dave explained to me, it is an interesting format for the viewer. So if you guys like it at home, it's an interesting format for you to see lots of different picks so you don't see the same meta picks over and over again. Uh, and also, it's a, it's a testing the, the ability of the team to have a breadth of champions. So be able to play lots of things, play lots of different compositions. So it's testing another skill that doesn't always get tested in competitive play. I personally am not the biggest fan of it. However, I understand why it's appealing and actually it did make for some interesting games in this series. We're not going to break down every single game of the series. There were six games in total. That would take me too long. What we're going to do is we're going to go through some games but we're going to essentially cut a game off when it's won so when when i'm going to basically talk about why a game was won at a certain point how it's difficult for the enemy team to come back and why the, they made the mistake that they did or why the enemy or why the team that won made the, the the play that they did well and we're going to basically break down the comps and talk about why they're strong and hopefully you can learn about learn a little bit about analyzing champions and about when you should be using them in, at certain stages in the game so let's look at these two different compositions Gragas, Corky mid, by the way, so it's Tame Lapse on Ziggs, which you can't see because my camera's blocking it, but Tame Lapse has got Ziggs, he's playing Ziggs bot lane, so Ziggs, Alistair bot lane, Olaf in the jungle, super strong pick, um, Corky in mid, who's quite strong right now, and then obviously Gragas in the top, who's pretty strong as well. What you will notice about um, uh, Omega Smart is that they are running lots of barriers. Everybody is running barrier. I don't know if you've noticed this, but there are no ignites, very few exhausts. There's only two exhausts in the game in, in its entirety, and barriers are all over the place. Um, I don't know if this is something that the the Asian teams have just kind of uh, switched switched onto. That you know, if you're not going up against a huge amount of healing, you'd prefer to just have the barrier as a defensive uh, of a defensive tool. But loads of barriers in these games. Even the the the, the Garen running a barrier, which is absolutely crazy. But hey, is what it is. Um. What stands out to me about the Mega Smart composition, I'll, I'll play the video just so we can get going. What stands out to me about the, Me the Omega Smart composition is they've got a very strong level 5. Ziggs level 5 is pretty strong, good ultimate for a teamfight situation. Alistair strong level 5, Olaf a very strong level 5. Corky, if he's got Sheen, can be a pretty strong level 5. If he doesn't have a Sheen, then it's kind of mediocre. Uh, and then, obviously, Gragas, super strong level 5. Next play. Jinx Lulu, strong as the game scales up, but not particularly strong at the first Dragon fight. Shivana's got a strong level 5, but obviously it's really useful for just trying to burst out that first Drake. Garan, good for a single target execute, but generally not so good in, in a, in a teamfight situation. And uh, and Aurelian Souls level 5 is kind of like, eh, it, it's okay. It's not, it's not exactly, always, it's not always going to be game-changing, but it is okay. So what this is telling me is that when we come to the first Drake fight of the game, uh, I genuinely believe that Omega Smart have the better composition. I think Omega Smart have got the better Drake fight composition. I think they've got stronger level fives, stronger team fight tools in general. And the reason I believe they have stronger team fight tools in general is because they just have a lot of AOE damage. You've got Ziggs Ultimate, Gragas Ultimate, Corky, uh, and then obviously you have the the Olaf who who's not going to face much CC on the side of Next Play anyway, but he's just going to run 
whichever target he wants to down, be that the Aurelian Soul or the Jinx with relative ease. So I believe that the first dragon fight is in favour of Omega Smart. And why does that favour Omega Smart? Because Shivana wants the first dragon. And more importantly, this is, the f this is an infernal dragon. So Shivana absolutely wants to contest the first dragon. However, you're going up against a composition which I think is infinitely better in a dragon fight scenario, especially at the early stages of the game. You know, if you, if you kind of give this one up and maybe go to the second drake or the third drake, then, you know, I'd start to change my opinion on next play's chances in a 5v5 team fight. But I do believe that the... the that honestly, the the uh, the Drake fight team uh, at the first Drake anyway, the team fight is much stronger from Omega Smart. So that's what I'm kind of keeping my eyes on. That's what I'm I'm looking towards as being a potential uh, game deciding fight in this game. Because if Omega Smart win that first Drake fight decisively, then it's something that will be quite difficult to come back from for next play. So as you can see here, we're actually just seeing mirrored jungling right now. So we saw Jushi take the bottom Scuttler head in to take the um head in to take the enemy Krugs, but we're just going to see the Olaf do exactly the same thing. So he mirrors the Shivana's path on the top side. However, he's already taken blue. Uh, we'll walk away and get Krugs, and we essentially have full jungle clears for both. Now, I like the, I like the aggressiveness of this Alistair and Jinx here. Really nice uh, traps to stop the Ziggs actually getting in range of base attacking and using the bomb, otherwise he certainly would have forced out some summoners. But actually, the, the Ziggs Alistair is a relatively strong bot lane because you can be aggressive, you can push the wave. And one of the things that Ziggs is really good at, and one of the things that I think is better for Ziggs in competitive play. Is I think they both forced to flash in. That's a really nice headbutt from Alistair, honestly. That was such a nice headbutt from Stronger. Just like, as soon as the Aurelian Soul comes in, you headbutt as he's about to proc the stun. The headbutt will automatically go through before you get stunned, and he gets knocked into the river. That was really nice from Alistair. Good way of preventing the Aurelian Soul roam. So if you're ever playing Alistair into Aurelian Soul, remember that technique. Aurelian Soul shows himself. As soon as he shows himself, you headbutt him, so that even if he procs the stun, you're going to be able to get the, the headbutt of the Aurelian Soul away and keep your AD carry or your, in this case, Ziggs very safe. But one of the things that I think is understated about Ziggs and one of the things that I think that makes Ziggs stronger and competitive compared to... Um, compared to solo queue, is that Ziggs has got very strong turret taking potential. So if you have good team coordination and you're able to roam, um, you know, across the map very nicely, you're able to get a lot of damage onto turrets, then obviously Ziggs is going to be, uh, obviously Ziggs is going to be a good choice for you when it comes to uh, pushing turrets effectively. So Ziggs actually used the ultimate to clear the wave here. Um, he used it to essentially go back with, you know, 20 seconds to Drake fight. I'm guessing he's going to have that ultimate up for the next team fight. Otherwise, I would say that that's a little bit of a waste just to go for a single cannon minion using the um, using the, the the Ziggs ultimate. He's up in 54 seconds. So that is that is a problem. He has picked up the Archangel staff. That is nice. But he's, he's got another 54 seconds before that Ziggs ultimate becomes available. Now, Corky package picked up at the right time here. If you're ever playing Corky, this is what you should do. You should back at the four-minute mark to make sure you pick up your package for that first Drake fight because it is a very impactful tool. It's one of the things that makes Corky really strong for the first Drake of the game. It actually uses it to go aggressive onto Aurelian. So I love this play, actually, from uh, uh, Arise. Just pushes Aurelian Soul out of the fight here immediately. Now, one of the things that's a little bit tricky about this scenario is that Aurelian Soul is going to just now essentially warp back to lane using his um, uh, using his uh, journey. So he's just going to be able to essentially you know run back all the way back to lane. But some big item spikes have been picked up. So we have the Leandries for the Gragas. As I said, the Archangels for the Ziggs. I'm not sure what Olaf or what Corky have got, but I would imagine they have got they've either got part of their Triforces, maybe the most important part of that is Sheen. But you can see the next player desperate to force this first dragon in the game. Um, maybe enough time has been bought to allow uh, Ziggs to get his ultimate back here. That's what I'm looking at. Yes, I think Ziggs should have his ultimate back, and he does. Uh, and actually, blue team steal the dragon here. But look at this. This is the level five fight that I'm talking about. Um, it's just it's just carnage, absolute carnage for next play because they don't really have a strong level five versus all the the CC and all of the area area effect damage that uh, that um, uh, that. Uh, Omega have. So this is just one of the problems. And this is where Ziggs comes in really useful, by the way. Just takes the tower down low, and suddenly Satchel charge and it's destroyed. They got, they got that out of a single push. And that was such a swing in gold in favor of Omega, because they got a very strong team fight, and then using the Ziggs, were able to rotate quickly to the mid lane and set up a tower take. And that mid lane ta tier one is the most important in the game. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to speed it up to two times, because... Um, 
because I believe at this point it's relatively over for next play. I don't really think there's much comeback potential if you lose the first Drake that hard. Now, obviously, they take down the Garen here. That's nice. They should be able to pick up a turret. This is a good play from next play because at least they're getting something back on the map. But they are trading it for the Rift Herald at the end of the day. So the Rift Herald is going to answer in terms of another tower, and it looks like Corky's also pushing at tower. We can have a look back at that Drake fight here. And again, uh, I just want you to... Yeah, so I'm just going to go back just like two seconds here. a little bit too far okay right they set up for the drake great okay and she ults this this is this is something that i you know i get it i get it if you are trying to sneak the dragon or you're trying to take it quickly because the enemy can't respond but the shivana ults the drake i hate it when shivanas do this uh, shivanas if you ever do this only do it if you think that you're going to be able to take the drake before the enemy team even has a chance to respond not because you want to burst it out uh because there is a threat of a steal do it if you only ever do this if you think there's any, the enemy's got a chance to respond. The, the problem with ulting the Drake is you now use an incredibly important engage tool that is one of the best ways to start putting pressure on the backline as a Shivana. If you don't have the Drake, you are a, if you don't have your ultimate transformation, you are a sitting duck in teamfight scenarios. Olaf over the wall is a 50-50 smite because they are both level 7. And then you have a huge amount of CC, a pincer maneuver coming out from Gragas and from Alistair. Gragas can body slam, Alistair can headbutt pole, you're all grouped up. This is going to be carnage, as we saw earlier. And yeah, easy enough as you like. Not a great Ziggs ultimate, if you ask me. But honestly, they're too much CC to deal with. Shivana used her ultimate incorrectly, in my opinion. Uh, and given that they hard shoved the bot lane, it looks like... Um they, they go for the Rift Herald push on the top. I believe they stop it from going down, but it's 39 HP. Like, a, that's a single basic attack from someone. Corky could roam up there. Ziggs could throw a satchel charge over the wall, and that's a free tower. Again, roaming with Ziggs takes the satchel. They, they don't even need to use the, the satchel charge. They use it defensively to stop the Aurelian Soul coming in. But roaming with Ziggs, he's got such strong tower taking potential. And this is one of the things that makes Ziggs really strong in a, uh, in a teamfight scenario. Um, again... I'm going to skip forward a little bit in the game, um, just because I don't think there's anything inter interesting that's going to happen until the next Drake. So we have the next Drake up here, so this is going to be an important part to, to talk about, okay? At this point, your 5k gold down. This is a pretty significant lead for 9 minutes into the game. Um, and again, I still don't think your team fight is stronger. However, keeping your ultimates for the engage, um, trying to keep your uh, Jinx as safe as possible, this is a good thing. So this is the this is the, the Drake fight coming through. Koki uses the package. Oh my god, I need to go back and have a look at that package. It was so good. Okay, this package, look at where, where Corky's placed it, right? He has now zoned away Jinx, um, uh, Aurelian Soul, and Lulu, and they can't actually get into the fight without taking either a very long way around or taking a huge amount of damage. I'm actually going to slow this back down to one times now. I forgot I was in two times. Okay. So they steal the Drake with the ultimate. I hate that Jinx ultimate can do that, by the way. Um, Olaf actually peels off in a really awkward area. But there's still some low HP bars. You still have a lot of CC. Uh, and the Ziggs and the Corky on the back line are relatively untouched. Alistair jumps in. Should get the kill onto Jinx eventually here. Uh, so actually, you know, like you lose a couple of members in this scenario. Um, you lose two members for a Drake. That was actually relatively worth it for, for next play. Um, the, the only problem is, is like, what are you going to lose because of that? Um, there isn't really much on the map apart from Baron. You lost your jungler. Um, and so this is not a great space for, for Omega to actually do anything effectively with. So the Corky package was good. I just think the Olaf peeled off too early onto the wrong side of the fight. Should have maybe peeled back towards the Shivana. But honestly, it was just a good steal from the Jinx. And then they were able to... A good steal from the Jinx, which they were able to capitalize on. So that was actually a good, a good play by next player. They were lucky to get away uh, with the HP bars that they did. But uh, that was a good play. That was a good comeback from next play. Now, in terms of how they how they get back into this game, they just need to shovel gold onto the Jinx and the Aurelian Soul. Like, Jinx needs to take as much gold as possible. You need to get her to three items. Jinx Lulu can definitely carry the late game um, as long as you have the protection and you have the, the gold necessary. Uh, so I imagine the next bit of action is going to be around the Baron. We have a... Something happened here. I think someone got caught out. Looks like there might have been a catch on the Lulu at the top side of the map. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a catch on the Lulu at the top side of the map. Yeah, easy enough. Nice uh, nice um, bomb field from the Ziggs to stop her escaping. And now they're immediately going to threaten the Baron, which is good because you can see the Jinx is very curious about the Baron. You can see everyone's rotating back up to this side of the map. They're not actually going to do it, but they have the vision control to make sure that they're at least threatening the Baron at all times. Good catch from the Alistair. 
but nothing comes of it. They can't really capitalize easily enough. All right, so that was the one, the one kill there. Let's wait to see where we're going. We're going to skip forward a little bit. And again, this game was kind of difficult to come back from simply because of that first Drake fight. Now this is the second Drake. Obviously. The way you need to look at the map right now, there is complete vision control in blue and red side jungle for a, a, a mega smart. So when you get the first tier towers down, you can see, and Dave is showing you how much the um, the red team can actually see, they can't see anything. And so they had to go for a blind steal with the Jinx ultimate. They couldn't they couldn't risk face, che face checking into an Alistair and a Gragas. So they essentially just had to say, we're giving this dragon up. And again, the more dragons you deny them from Shivana, the worse that she becomes. This is just good play from Omega. They are strangling this game out. Um, however, one of the things that would be in the back of my mind is Omega Smart is Jinx is going to get strong. And we need to do something to finish this game up before Jinx does get too strong. The, the I think the thing that I think Omega Smart can really do is obviously push the Baron, threaten that as as the next objective. That would be the most important thing in my opinion. Um, and then I'll, and then I usually usually use that Baron to be super aggressive with the Ziggs, siege towers, and end the game. That's the way I'd be looking to play this game. So Omega Smart look like they're they're working up towards the Baron right now. Let's have a look here. Okay, so Chuli forced to dive away here again. They are just completely controlling the vision around that Baron pit right now. And again, Omega Smart reluctant to go for it, which is interesting because if, for me, I would just be threatening it, like just basically either starting it or trying to, to bait around the brush. I wouldn't be showing myself on the map at this point. I'm, I'm, I feel strong enough, like I feel strong enough as a unit right now to just be like sitting at Baron, sitting in the Baron brush, clearing vision. Because right now you're just giving Jinx free gold. Like you're not doing anything on the map. You're either waiting for Elder Dragon to spawn, or you're just giving Jinx free gold. And I personally would not be doing that if I was a Mega Smart, even though they they are clearly they've clearly snowballed this game from the first Drake really nicely. That was the mistake the next play made. I don't think that their first Drake fight was particularly strong, and they went into a team fight that was much stronger in terms of that sense. So again, another vi another ward goes over the wall for next play. I do think a Mega Smart has kind of been like stalling this game out a little bit and i don't think they need to now what i would say is that ziggs does scale pretty well as does corky um you do have to be a little worried i mean jinx is now at three items so this you know this is this is relatively scary i mean next play this is good okay this is really good you've got alistair zoning away you've got um gragas zoning away and you can see that they are they're just desperately going for it they're trying to stop shivana going away she can't she flashes over the wall here doesn't get there in time beautiful play that's exactly what you want to see the patience paid off for next play uh sorry for uh, for omega uh, and now they've got the Baron, they have a Ziggs, they're in a really strong position. Even going to take out, ooh, the Aurelian Soul, yeah, the Aurelian Soul dies here, Ziggs picks up the kill. And at this point, it's going to be nigh on impossible for next play to defend against a Baron plus a Ziggs. Because he, he's just going to take those towers so ridiculously quickly. Um, and you'll see here, it doesn't, I don't think he even needs to use, I think you save the Satchel Charge for the, the Inhibitor turret, like here. So yeah, he's got it set up and takes it takes it there. Nice and easy. Beautiful combo with the Alistair ult, and this is just going to be game. Beautiful headbutt pull into the, the Ziggs ultimate, and that is the, the second game of the series that went Omega's way. So, just to just to refresh. First dragon fight, stronger for Omega Smart. They played it well. They pincered the team between a Gragas and, and an Alistair. Um, Ziggs ultimate was a little off, but they, they, their pure team fight capabilities of the AoE damage at that stage of the game was much stronger than next play. And then next play were just kind of starved out for a long time. Second dragon fight, not so clean. Third dragon fight was super clean because they just kept the vision control completely safe. And then they just played a lot. They played the game quite slow from that point. Um, I think, you know, if you were going to going to refresh, maybe you, you threaten the Baron earlier or at least like bait the Baron earlier if you're Omega Smart there. But they, they, they seem to have timed it incredibly well. I, I think the Alistair had a great game in terms of the, the disruption that he was running alongside the Gragas. And then just that synergy between the, Grig, the Ziggs and the Alistair was showing massively in this game. Okay, we're going to jump on to another game. Again, I'm going to focus on parts of the games where I feel like th th it didn't go particularly well. I'm not going to analyze the uh, I'm not going to analyze the entire games one by one because it would take forever. But we're going to jump to our next game and we're going to start to break that down. Okay, this is the third game in this series and it is next play on blue side. They're running Gragas, Zinzal, uh, Braum, Oriana, Ezreal. Pretty strong team fight composition. Got a relatively strong level five. You can definitely compete for the first dragon. Going into Lulu MF. That's you know, generally a strong laning phase. Graves, Singed, and, and Aurelian Soul. If I were to put my bets on what a strong level 5 or the, the better first dragon fight would be, it would be next play because I think they've got the better synergy, the better team fight ultimates. You've got Orianna, Gragas ultimate, you've got Zinzao ultimate, Ezreal ultimate. There's lots of AoE damage. If you play the team fight out normally, 
I would I put my bets on next play. One of the things that went on in this game was user like utilizing a Braum level one. Braum is very strong level one, so you, you might want to look for the invade with Braum, and you're seeing that here. One of the problems that I have about this invade is the Gragas. Gragas is coming up for a five-man invade, a very late five-man invade, mind you. This was a this was an invade that they were in two minds about and didn't commit to. Singed on the bottom side of the map gets a free wave. He's going to run behind the turret and he's going to proxy the second wave. So he's already putting a lot of pressure XP-wise onto Gragas uh, and Gragas is losing a, a huge amount to turret at this stage in the game. This is a this was actually a very, very bad start for... Um, a very, very bad start for next play. And also, Singed is going to steal the, the, the fruit straight up. And he's going to, he's, he's level two, nearly level three, and he's now going to invade the, the Zinzal. Because, the, 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 like, the Gragas can't respond because he's losing minions to tower. He is going to respond, but he's now way, way, way behind. They are so much stronger um, just at this stage in the game. And also, you know, Impressive just smites away the blue buff. That was a mistake. The early level one was a mistake. Like, Gragas should have just gone bot. You should have gone for a 4v4 invade. Gragas should not have been um, at that side of the map because you didn't even commit to the invade properly. So that was a, that was a, a big mistake from next play in this game. Uh, the invade was was half-hearted, and you you let the Singed get too much free experience. And also, we talked about it before, when we, talked, when we analyzed the previous game where we had that Braum Graves invade, lane priority singed got complete lane priority in a lane that he should not get priority in at level one like if a gragas is using his barrels correctly a singed should not be able to do that at level one but you let the singed do that because gragas wasn't even there and that allowed singed to proxy the next wave steal away the honey fruit and an invade at a higher level with more damage output than your um uh than the Zinzao and the Gragas could, could could bring back. Now, this was an absolutely mental fight that broke out. Good gank by Zinzao. Um, smart. Uh, Tame Apps is able to get uh, a kill here, which is nice. It's a double kill for, uh, for a, um, a misfortune at this stage in the game. Uh, and you're going to see the, the Lulu just has to flash across the wall as well. So misfortune and Lulu get away with a sliver of HP. That's a little lucky for Omega. That could have gone very differently. You could have given a huge number of um, kills over to the Ezreal and over to the... Um, the Oriana, which I think would have snowballed the game uh, well, especially for the first dragon fight. But look at look at um, uh, um, uh, uh, JLC on the top lane now. Like he's he's completely unfazed by a Gragas. Gragas hasn't got any kind of uh, pressure on him anymore, and that's a bit of a mistake. So this is a yeah, this is a bit of a mistake. I think that you've already got uh, a nice set of kills from this uh, initial engage. You don't need to go much further. I understand why they did because look how close they were. But the smite on the razor beaks actually stopped Ezreal from getting a uh, a good clear mystic shot onto the misfortune, and then he accidentally basic attacked the Lulu. I don't know whether he was in range of the misfortune, but he basic attacked the Lulu instead of the misfortune when he flashed, which meant that Lulu took that hit and was able to survive. A misfortune if she'd even got even like tickled she would have died in that scenario so again a little bit awkward from the level one here for next play they kind of make up for it with a good gank in the mid lane but you've given some gold over to the misfortune which is not what you want especially for for the first drake fight which is opening up in 30 seconds and you can already see um the the lane swap has uh repositioned itself back over to the bot side of the map because they are they realize that this first drake is a good scenario for them to fight you have the oriana who's almost at leandri's you have a strong level five with the braum and the ezreal um, and if Arisen makes his way down, especially if they back here and pick up their uh, their completed Leandries, you've got some big item spikes to work with. So that's Oriana picking up hers. hers. I imagine Arisen is going to back here and pick up his own um, uh, Leandries. And then you're going to have two Leandries for the first dragon fight of the game, which is a good place to be. Although I don't, I think Gragas isn't actually even going to bother going back, so he's just going to come with the with the the haunting guys and, and the blasting one, which is fine. But still, the, still the level five is good. The level five is good for uh for next play now omega start this one up this is the mistake right here this is the mistake like look at the look at the how the next play composition is split okay um i'm just gonna uh, dave get rid of the fog of war please okay right look at the map look at how the next play composition is split up you have your Zinzao behind the pit, I imagine trying to use the Blast Cone to get into the pit. You have your Gragas and Oriana on one side, and your Braum and Ezreal on the other. If Braum was next to the Oriana, he would ult four people, they could get a combo shockwave, Ezreal would get a good true shot barrage. This is a one fight for next play, if the Braum and Ezreal are on the correct side of the Dragon Pit, or if the Oriana and the Gragas are on the correct side of the Dragon Pit. I don't want to put all the blame on Ezreal 
and uh, and Braun when realistically it's either side. But the, the 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 fact of the matter is the next play was split, and they a team fight comp. Many of you will know does not work if you're split. Look at the singe. This is such a, a clean play from JLC. He sees the Oriana isolated and bop into the middle of the fight, and she's immediately blown up. And now you don't now you don't win the fight. You don't have Oriana. You can't fight the team fight anymore. You don't have Oriana. Uh, now, actually, uh, Omega Smart decided that the, the dragon isn't going to be their main point. And this is super smart. This is a really, really good play from Omega. Okay? Dragon, you can always fight for it again. Right? Dragon, you can always fight for it again if you want to. It's not a massive deal breaker, especially as a Cloud Drake. Mid lane tier 1 is massive. And now, why do they go for mid lane tier 1 here over the dragon? Well, it's about the way that they've... Uh, they've pressured out a the wave was pushing and b the way that they, they've pressured out the the pathing from the next play guys look at the mini map braum ezreal gragas and zinzel they have to walk the long way round to get to the turret they have to walk through the red side jungle past their razor beaks in between their mid their tier one and tier two tower in the mid lane they're not going to get here in time they're just not going to get here in time. Singe slows them down it's a good it's a good gragas barrel but it doesn't mean enough and they get the mid lane tier one turret for free that is such a big brain play from Omega, knowing that actually that is more important for them to pick that up, especially when it comes to providing safe vision control for Singed when he wants to try and split push or whatever. But now they can either they can either just go back and and head towards the Drake fight and fight again because they didn't use the Misfortune ultimate. I don't think they used the uh, the I don't think they used many ultimates whatsoever, and they've also now got a nice gold advantage in their favor. So that was a really, really smart play from Next Play. And opening up the mid tier one now allows them to be much more aggressive in the jungle. Um, so that was a huge, huge play, a play from Next Play. Now they are now 4,000 gold in the lead. Uh, and then they're not even that keen to go for the first dragon. Um, unless I'm an idiot and they took the dragon in the first place. Did they take the dragon anyway? Did they literally get the dragon? No, they didn't. No. No, I am right. The dragon's still there. Okay. I thought I was going crazy because I, I thought the icon was grayed out. But yes, the dragon's still there. Okay. All right, we can see we can see a fight. So it looks like next play have decided that actually they want to go for the dragon here. They see Aurelian Soul on the top side of the map. This is a, you know this is a, a fairly sensible play because you feel like you can burst this down before Aurelian Soul gets here. Uh, that is actually the case. Beautiful Braum ultimate to to um uh, beautiful Braum ultimate to I essentially want to go back and show you how good Braum is versus Misfortune. Okay, so they're bursting it down. Watch Braum here. Misfortune looks for an ultimate and boom, Braum ultimate knocks her up, stops that ultimate in its place. But Look at how strong this Aurelian Soul Stun is, is. I mean, next play had won the fight until this moment right here. That was disgusting from a, from Arise. That 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 Aurelian Soul Stun was absolutely nutty. Like it just completely obliterated the fight. Like that was that fight was over for Omega Smart because actually next play they played next play played it relatively well. But that's the power of Aurelian Soul in team fights. Like if you can get him to jump in at that point and just do a huge stun like that, it's absolutely crazy. So again. Another uh, another good fight. Now, what you know, the, the silver lining is that obviously Ezreal and Next Play secured the first Drake. Again, we can watch back. Nice knock up onto the Misfortune to stop her using the ultimate. You blocked a lot of it with the Braum ultimate anyway, and boom, this this fight was won until this very moment here. Great stun. You stunned three people. Ezreal taken low. He goes down to the uh, to the Aurelian Soul, and the fight's over from that point. Okay, so this is still a strong driving seat position for for Omega Smart. They, they I think they, they they know how to play their team fight comps a bit better. Um, the one thing that I took away from this series is that Next Play weren't particularly good at assessing at what point in the game they should be fighting um, and how their compositions actually work. Whereas Omega Smart were much more effective at doing that. Uh, you can see they're just going a bit more aggressive on the top side of the map here. They've got four players at the top, and I think he gets it with the red buff. So that was a really cheeky little smite red buff. Uh, kill for Impressive, and Impressive was a really strong jungler in this series. But that kill on Braum should be enough to warrant them going for Rift Herald, which is going to allow them to snowball another lane or get some more towers. And what I'm loving about um, the way that the, the um, Omega are playing this is they're just allowing Aurelian Soul to be the split pusher because they know that he can get across the map relatively quickly with his third ability. So we're going to jump a little bit further into the future. Looks like they uh, they drop the Rift Herald in the top side of the map. Again, no one's here. So this is just a good snowball for um, for Omega Smart. They also get the bot lane tower as well. And at this point, I think this I think this team, this game was probably lost from that dragon team fight. I don't think there's much way back into it. I want to skip towards a uh, a Baron fight. You can see there's nothing major happening. Just a couple of kills getting caught out here and there. Okay, we looks like we've got a team fight here. So let's have a look. Okay, so we'll go back. It, yeah, they've started the dragon. Okay, so they started the dragon. 
The redemption comes through so they can see it's happening. The, the, the Baron gets started, rather, and it just immediately forces next play to have to contest. And that's not what you want when you are at 12,000 gold in the deficit. Uh, and, and honestly, there isn't much analysis to do when a team is this far ahead. You just have more item spikes. It's very difficult way, very difficult for you to get back into the game. And you can see the Singe just running you through. And, I, and look, admittedly, I, I don't think Singed is that good. However, when you're given a start that you were given for that Singed, you know, being able to just invade the Zinzao, stop him in the early jungle, proxy the first wave, it's a brilliant start for Singed. You couldn't ask for much more. And honestly, from this point onwards, it looks like um, I think they won. Off, I think they just won off that Baron take. Yeah, they just they just they just ran through bot with the Baron and won the game, uh, as you can see here. I, again. There's not much point analyzing games when uh, when a team is this far in the lead in terms of in terms of gold value. But again, it was that first dragon that really played uh, played an issue. Now we're going to analyze the last game in the series, which was super weird, um, very weird. I'll talk to you about. I'll talk to you why. There was another dragon fight that I want to analyze as well, so I'll get to that as well. I'm just going to show you that there were some issues with, with with the way that Next Play played dragon fights, especially. It was one of the big things that I think let them down this series. The first dragon fight is where they always came undone. So I'm going to show you another dragon fight, which I wasn't particularly impressed with by Next Play. Okay, so there was a, a, a game that I wanted to break down, but it's not actually... I can't find it on Assassin Dave's Trovo channel, and it's not on his on his YouTube playlist either. So we're just going to go for the final game in the series. Basically, I don't know if, if you guys were watching, but there was a game where Next Play had Misfortune, and they chose to use the Misfortune ultimate on the Dragon rather than in the team fight, and it was really weird, and essentially they lost the game because of it. This was an apt, This was the final game in the series, and this was a mind-boggling game, Okay. Obviously, we are down to game six at this point, so there's a lot of champions that have been taken off the board. Disaster chose to play support Jarvan, which I actually don't think is bad with Draven. You have a lot of engage potential, right? So I don't think support Jarvan is necessarily a bad call. However, <laughs> I'm going to have to skip back a little bit further in, in, the, um, in, the, in the video, I think. Yeah, okay. Let's go back even further. I really want to go back to the very beginning of the game. Because there was some level one shenanigans. Okay. However, the way that he played support Jarvan with the Draven didn't make any sense to me. And I'm going to talk about why. Okay. So first of all, Disaster looks like he wants to roam with the Wukong in the jungle. Which I I, I kind of don't mind. I kind of don't mind, if I'm honest with you. Um, I don't mind the idea of a Jarvan ganking with a Wukong if you get level two. The problem... <laughs> The problem with the way the next player play this, and I assume it's because they wanted the Jarvan to be a ganking, um, a ganking uh, support second jungler maybe, and you just let the Draven solo the lane. I assume it's that's what they wanted, but they didn't give him any experience, and Jarvan is not a champion until you hit level two, so he was just walking around the the, the jungle with with Joshi, but Joshi was getting all of the experience. Now, disaster then had to deal with the invade or the potential invade coming from Smart. And it was a level two Blitzcrank, and you're still level one as Jarvan, and you're just, you're just not a champion. The other issue that I have with this is that when you pick a Draven, because look, he just flashes in and flags him. He doesn't, he can't even follow up. He flashes in and flags him. I think he gets the kill eventually. I think, well, actually, I think it's um, Joshi that gets the kill here. But he, he wasn't even a champion. He's the champion now, of course, that he's level two, but he just fl he flashes in and flags him. And it was the saddest thing ever. Um, but yeah, the major problem that I have right now is that when you pick a Draven, Draven's strongest point in the game is the laning phase. He's a super strong early game jungler. and Sorry, early game uh, AD carry. You want to be basic attacking the Ezreal. You want to be diving in with your, with your combo. You don't want to be dueling the enemy jungler 1v3. Like, I, that, that to me just blew my mind. Like, I was like, disaster, what are you doing? You're having a disaster of a game. But yeah, I really think that if you pick Draven, you should be picking a, a, a support that helps facilitate the power that Draven has, which is in lane. And this is where I really think the next play played this this particular game very weirdly. Like, I, I think the idea of a roaming Jarvan with a Wukong is strong, because Wukong's ganks themselves are not particularly strong, for the main reason that... He doesn't really have much CC, so therefore it can be quite difficult to actually get a gank off in lane. And so as a Jarvan, you basically go in, you flag you flag, and you dragon strike combo, and then the Wukong gets the follow-up, and it's a really good ganking duo squad. 
But they just didn't they didn't do that, and neither did they they facilitate the Draven in lane. And I think that's where the major problem came through this game is that they just didn't they honestly just didn't. I, I, well, I don't think played the I don't think they played the early game very well at all. Now that was a really nice outplay by Arisen on the Akali. Like he gets the kill, she tries to dive him. I, I know she was, I, I think she basically assumed that she was going to get the execute. Beautiful little sidestep to dodge the Ezreal ultimate, of course. But I think she thought she was going to get the um. Uh, you know, she thought she was going to get the uh, the execute, and actually, you know, the, this early game hasn't gone too bad for next play. Uh, the problem is that you have a Draven who hasn't really been facilitated. So when it comes to the the dragon fights, you're still going up against a Kennen, you're still going up against uh, an Ezreal or Shivana. Like that's a good team fight combination. You don't really have as strong of a team fight combination. You do have the Wukong uh, Malphite ultimate, which is pretty strong, but you have a Draven that isn't really ahead. Um, and so you, you, I don't think you've really facilitated this Draven particularly well in this game. And that's one of the problems that I think that the next player have got, even though they've actually played the early laning phase out relatively well this time and, and obviously been much more aggressive in the mid lane. They do get a, a, a catch back up onto the Ari. That's just really nice from the, the, the Blitzcrank from Stronger. He just makes a really good roam there, picks the Ari up, who'd already used her ultimate in that fight with the Kenum. And now the Ari's dead for the dragon fight. So honestly, that was a, that was essentially an MVP play for for the Blitzcrank. Now Shivana just jumps over the wall. Um, she essentially needs to buy time here. Now this is good from this is good from um, uh, strong uh, from Omega because Ari's not actually in the fight. So a great Ezreal ultimate takes down uh, everybody relatively low. Again, Jarvan's positioning is super out of uh, out of sync. And by the time that the the uh, Malphite and the Ari even get there, the, the fight's over. And this is what this is how you should be using. That, that right there, okay, I'm going to go back a little bit. This is how you should use Shivana ultimates in dragon fights, okay? Don't use it on the dragon unless you know that you can burst it before anyone gets there. Um, over the wall, into the middle of the team fight, and you just start blowing, you just start blowing people up. Draven, not been facilitated this game. He dies, loses all of his stacks. He didn't get much laning per phase. Um, this Blitzcrank's made some excellent hooks this game as well. Really good play. And honestly, another situation where the the, the, the Dragon team fights from next play were not good. Um, I'll skip forward to the next Dragon. But as you can see, we're, we're like, they are, they are massively behind already. So we're going to skip forward to the next Dragon. But at this stage in the game, you're you're ten and four. You've got a five k gold lead. And again, next play, just not in position for this. They get Ken and ultimated. You can just see how strong Ken and ultimate still is in a team fight scenario. And they're completely split up. They're not playing this dragon fight the way they should be. And um, yeah, at this point, it's uh, at this point, it's basically GG. Uh, I'm not. You know, I, I could keep going. I'm, I'll probably look for the next dragon fight. I guess. So the next dragon's spawning in 10 seconds. But it just looks at this point, next play don't have any vision. They can't push out of their own jungle. They're 10,000 gold behind. Shivana's already got two drakes to, bo to boost her, her capability. She's going to get her third drake for free, which is the earth drake, which gives her the slow on her, her Q when she's in dragon form. And it just looks like next play don't know what to do. They're, they're just either grouping up to try and catch someone out in a brush. They can't fight the dragons. Um, and another, uh, like the flash hook from... The flash hook from Stronger there is absolutely filthy. And now you can just see that, again, next play out of position. No one here to defend the inhibitor turret. They're going to just group man, group five man. This is a good Shivana ultimate because it just bursts the turret down quickly. And they get the inhibitor turret in the mid. At this point, it's basically over. Um, I'm going to skip forward a little bit further. And again, you can see they've taken down every inhibitor. There's no way back for them at this point. The Draven has not been facilitated. Ken and ultimate comes through. It's still super strong. And there you go. It is a win for next play. This sorry for Omega. This was the tournament win for them. So what I really wanted to highlight throughout this uh, this kind of like review of some of these games was that first dragon fights are actually really important. They're important for two reasons, and I've talked about it in a previous video. You don't need to fight for them if your composition composition is not designed to fight for a first dragon effectively. So you don't need to fight for first dragon if, if your composition has not got a level a good level five team fight. If you're a scaling comp like Jinx Lulu and you don't have a good facilitating mid laner jungle or, or baron laner, you shouldn't be fighting for first dragon no matter which dragon it is. You like even giving away Inferno is not a death sentence. You can still scale up in the game and come back. Secondly, if you if you if you do want to fight for first dragon, make sure you play to the strengths of your composition. If you've got a team fight comp, don't split. Like make sure you've got all of your carries protected. They're in the back line. You're ready to play front to back, and you can play the team fight out normally. 
Next play had too many times where they were just split at the dragon fights. They didn't play it the way they should have done, and they didn't really use the ultimates the way they should have done either. So dr first dragon fights are in incredibly important in this game, mainly because teams are like de 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 right now teams are determined to fight for them. But my advice would be, even in solo queue, you don't need to fight for the first dragon if your if your team comp's not going to win. Like if I'm going into a cannon mouth fight, Shivana. I don't know, Misfortune Brawn comp. Do you think I'm going to fight for First Dragon? Of course I'm bloody not. They're going to absolutely destroy me if they just can click their butt, if they can just click their ultimates. So, you know, like a lot of this game, a lot of these games, when we when we review them and you look back at them, they were, they're kind of lost at the First Dragon for next play. Like if next player just played those First Dragon fights out better, um, or they had played towards a split pushing style, like really, I, I think, playing on the strengths of Chuli and playing on the strengths of Arisen, they they might have been more successful in this series, but they d were determined to run it down for the first dragon every single game, and, and that's kind of what cost them, if I'm honest with you. Whereas Omega, they were much smarter about the way that they played their dragon fights. They drafted much better team fight compositions for level five, and they knew that they were strong, and they played the team fights out better. And I think every game where Omega came out on top on the first dragon, they won because they were able to snowball it so effectively. So that was just a really, really good, um, again, A, drafting from Omega and B, use around, uh, of, of fights around the dragon. So yeah, that was the, the grand finals. You can go watch watch all of this on Assassin Dave's YouTube channel. Um, there's loads of uh, YouTube videos there, including the commentary from myself and Maxman throughout the finals. Uh, really, really good series. I recommend that you watch it in full if you get time, but this was just a small bit of analysis, really talking about dragon fight strength team comps and, and you know about why you don't need to run it down every single time. I will see you soon, and if you enjoyed the content, feel free to sub.